Dear brothers and sisters in the Archdiocese of Cáceres, Mabuhay, it's an honor for me to be invited to address some words to you today on the occasion of your March for Life. Unfortunately, I cannot be there with you physically, but through the kind invitation of Father William Santiago, I am delighted to send to you this recorded message of my participation and every encouragement to you all in your efforts to uphold the dignity of human life, the inalienable dignity of every human being and the rights we flow from that dignity in the first place, the right to life and the defense of life are at the heart of the Church's message. For this reason, too, your Christian witness on the sacred value of all human life from the moment of conception to its natural end stands out for all to see as essential part of the gospel of life. In building a culture of life, the social teaching of the Church calls all the faithful and people of goodwill to promote and defend human life by building within society an authentic culture of life. Today there is a general misconception which views the Church's call to guide scientific development with light of gospel values and authentic morality as a call to repression or obscurantism of a liberty, reason, and the enlightenment. Yet the irony of it is that the church stands on the culture of life, stands out like a beacon of light. For by revealing the splendor, the truth, the wonder of human life, the church enlightens the way for both a just and authentic scientific research and development. The gift of life which God has entrusted to mankind calls each person, every one of you and of us, to appreciate the inestimable value of what he or she has been given and to take responsibility for it. As we unite to celebrate this gift from God, we recall the pro-life saints and heroes of our age, like Mother Teresa, Calcutta, Saint Gianna Beretta Mola, for instance, and Saint John Paul II. My, my dear friends, dear brothers and sisters, our goal is to live and be grounded in our faith that we continue to be inspired to generate a culture of life, a society that welcomes the weak and the poor, where every unborn human life is cherished and where the sick and the dying are cherished and cared for. Because of the unity of human life, an individual life represents a true paradox for biomedical research. Thus, the character of an individual evades the experimental method of this science, unless there is a basic grasp of the different elements of one's being and, in the case of human life, the qualities it possesses. Similarly, some sciences, psychology, sociology, and other sciences, for them, the human person is often defined by its rational interiority, one's intelligent, intelligence or free will. But the human person cannot be reduced in his or her definition according to qualities common to a species or cultures. The human person is not something, but someone an original and unique rational 
nature. Hence, while the concept of man and woman refers to the universal human nature, the term person denotes an absolutely singular reality with a unique dignity that must be respected as an ultimate end. Everybody of you is a person. This is at the core of a true culture of life. The conviction that each individual person has an inherent dignity and a unique personality. The ethical consequences of this approach are clear. It is not possible to treat that which is human as if its personal characteristic was secondary. Instead, the unique dignity of the human person must be served and respected. Human life thus demands, as we have seen, an unconditional respect. Not because it is a life, but because it is a person. But then, why does the person who is a contingent being of such a limited nature and in such a precarious condition merit such an absolute and unconditional respect? To this decisive question, reason by itself struggles to provide an adequate response. Indeed, only from a contemplative perspective, a theological perspective, is sufficient light given to elucidate a satisfying response. The theological reason for which we recognize that human life as value is linked to its intimate association to the Creator. In this regard, we consider a fundamental principle essential for all believers, especially for healthcare professionals. We start with the affirmation that all forms of life are in some way related to God. God is the creator. Yet, while this is true, there is a tremendous difference between human life and other forms of life. For the relationship with God and all other living beings is generic and mediate, yet contrarily, all human life is uniquely and dynamically in personal relation with God, as attested by Genesis in the Holy Scripture, which holds that man and women are made in image and likeness of God. You remember the first chapter of Genesis. Every single person is created in view of a personal communion with God, in knowledge and in love, and is thus endowed with a soul. This constitutes the unique dignity of a human life. It, it's privileged participation in the very inner life of God himself. Thus, human life in all its stages cannot be reduced to materiality, to biology, but understood for its supernatural end, toward which it is ordained. For such reason, the Christian is best enabled to favor a culture of life if he or she is aware of the sanctity of human life. Yet this sanctity is not just assumed or postulated from the unique rationality of the human being, but also from the will of God to reveal the order of nature to each person, the help of his grace, with the help of his grace. In this sense, I would like to quote here how was once uh, described 
uh, this fact. The proponents of the sanctity of life often base their argument on the nature of the person as a spiritual being. The fact that the human being possesses faculties which place him or her far above all animals is proof enough of the sanctity of human life. This argument holds that by and large its logic is universally able to persuade many as it bases its, its rationale upon human reason alone. But however, we concur with the Pope St. John Paul II when we affirm, affirm that aided by grace, human reason is nonetheless enabled to discover certain truth regarding the dignity of the human person. As Saint John Paul II stated, even in the midst of difficulties and uncertainties, every person sincerely open to truth and goodness can, by the light of reason and the hidden action of grace, come to recognize in the natural law written in the heart the sacred value of human life from its very beginning until its end and can affirm the right of every human being to have this primary God, good respected to the highest degree. That said, St. John Paul II in Evangelium Vitae, the text that you know well, the encyclical of St. John Paul II. Yet, in addition to all this, I wish to state a fact that has granted increased dignity to all human life, that is, the incarnation. The instrument through which God accomplished the fullness of salvation, history, and our redemption. Jesus Christ taught us through his life, through his example, that a holy use of one's life could be done by offering his or her own personal life with love for our brethren and God. As St. John Paul II said also, Jesus proclaims that life finds its center, its meaning and its fulfillment when it is given up. We too are called to give our lives to our brothers and sisters and thus to realize in the fullness of truth the meaning and destiny of our existence. May God therefore inspire you always, my dear brothers and sisters, to rise the highest calling of our human dignity, to imitate our Lord's love for the Father and our sacrificial love for all. I want to assure you all that God will never abandon us on this journey, which every day is a challenge. His will and grace is the source of our inspiration to defend the human life and the engine that empowers our promotion on the culture of life. We are thus not alone. Even your presence here today in Naga is a fruit of this grace of the Lord. To end, let us keep in mind that within the gospel of life, the family occupies a prominent role at the sanctuary of life. And I would like to greet any of the family present today. During his visit to the Philippines, you remember Pope Francis, our dear Pope Francis, eloquently appealed to your heart as a faithful and to all people of goodwill on matters concerning the family and human life. Convinced of the family's call at the place where life is welcomed, nourished, brought up, supported, and taken care of, we pray that in promoting the culture of life, the defense of the authentic rights of the family will find 
a prominent place to the benefit of all society and human life. And now I wish to invite you, my dear friends of the Bicol region of the Philippines, Naga, to join with me in prayer. We shall be able to do this because you, O oh Lord, have given us the example and have bestowed on us the power of your spirit. We shall be able to do this if every day with you and like you. We are obedient to the Father and do his will. Grant, therefore, that we may list with open and generous hearts to every word which proceeds for the mouth of God. Thus we shall learn not only to obey the commandment not to kill human life, but also to revere life, to love it, and to foster it. Thank you very much and have a good meeting in Naga. Let me, at the end, greet your the Archbishop, um, Archbishop uh, Tria Tirona. He's a good friend of mine, and uh, Father William Santiago, all his collaborator, and everybody of you comes from different part of the Bicol, from the Bicol region. Mabuhay, and uh, see you soon, maybe next year and have a good meeting, good March for Life. I'm united with you and see you soon, I hope. Thank you very much. <laughs>